I am joined by author Thomas Parrott, who not only wrote these two books you can see here on the screen, but has had success with other short fiction stories such as Arkham Horror, Key for Forge anthologies, and like I said, the books you can see here on screen. All available, all your usual places, Amazon, Audible, everywhere. Go and look them up. All absolutely wonderful. So we'll, we get a complete list of his work on the Goodreads website, which I've got a link to here. I'm going to put that in chat for you all. And for anyone that's listening afterwards, you will find that in the link description down below on the YouTube page. So you'll find that there as well. So we've covered that off as well. You can find yeah. Thomas on Twitter if you don't already. Yes, Audible as well, 50J, yeah. yeah the... both, both of them will be audiobook compliant one of them uh already i mean recruited you can already get an audiobook and the other one's going to be out on the 20th yep uh and i'll put the links as well chat in uh, for youtube you'll find them in the description down below if you're listening to this at a later date so that's yep. all good right so uh i will also just to mention i'll put the link for the previous interview so if you if you come into this and this is the first time you found my interviews there's a previous interview for Recruited. I'll put that in the link in the description down below as well, so you can check that out first. It was a, gr a lot of fun, which I'm sure this one will be, so you can go and check that out as well. And then that is everything covered. Thomas, anything you would like to add before we start? Um, No. No, no I, good? I'm, I'm planning to get through this interview saying as little as possible. <laughs> I'm making it so awkward for you. Like, I really, like, awkward silences... A lot of staring at the camera. Like, that's what's in store. We might not post this one on YouTube chat. This might be a one and done. <laughs> <laughs> We're never having it back. This might be really bad. No. Uh, yeah, no, this, that was a great introduction. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, mate. So, how have you been since last time we spoke? Let's get the personal stuff out of the way first. How have you been, sir? Oh, I'm good, man. Um, you know, just living uh, the dream. Yeah. I had COVID. Oh, no. Um, I've had the flu. Oh. Uh, I've dealt with long COVID, which it turns out is a huge bitch. Yep. Um, I mean, a uh, thing, a huge bad thing. Um, because now we're, we're being so professional, super fucking professional. <laughs> um, and yeah, it's it's been a fun year. Uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's I've been fine, legitimately. Everything's yeah. been um, I, I I I could complain, but what would be the point? Yeah, exactly, exactly. I'm glad you've been all right, though, mate. It's good to hear. All right, so uh, before we get to Compromised, there's a couple of things I just want to clear up. Uh, mm -hmm. Did you get your royalties for Recruited? No, believe it or not. Okay, Come on! Is, that's what I was going to tell you guys. I am a man of my word. Whatever else I am, I have lots of terrible qualities, but I keep my promises. I still have not gotten the report on how well that book has sold. So oh. I have no idea. No, it's a huge problem. I've had to like. We need it, to have a word yeah. with this book company. We need some. Yeah, like no, yeah, just no. Don't go bother them legitimately. <laughs> but uh, please, Jesus Christ, don't get me fired. No, we won't. We but won't. um, yeah, no, I'm having to like run it down. Like oh. I, I don't know what happened. I can't even get an answer on why I didn't get it. Um. So yeah, like it's been a snafu. Oh. But as soon as I, I'm, I, I'm a man. As soon as I find out you will know okay and it, then it, you may well have me forced to play a raid there you go chat that's that's what it was so if you're wondering what we were talking about last time thomas was here we said that we made the agreement that he would come and raid with us if he got these royalties for this book so we were just like say go and buy this book because the better it does the more chances of that happening but obviously not yet sadly but i'm sure coming soon because i'm sure it did did very very well oh my god from your lips to god's ears man that would that would change my day <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, no, I, I have not. I do not know if recruited has earned out. I, I mean, that would be lovely. I don't expect it. That would be surprising. But we'll, we yeah. we shall see. Awesome. All right. So before we again, before we move on to the books, do you want to tell the guys in chat for who don't know who you are a little bit about yourself that I maybe didn't cover in the introduction? Ah, uh, I am super interesting <laughs> and very cool. Uh, no, um. I, I live in the States. I live in the South, in Georgia. Um, I have a cat who I love. I don't know. What do you, like, what, what do you even tell people? Like, I, I, 
<laughs> Sorry, I, I should have been more. Pre- I am also tired. Uh, there's, there's been a lot of interviews lately. Um, See, I know, what he's, uh, I know what he said in the last time I asked him this question. Because I asked him this last time as well. <laughs> what did I say last? Yeah, go watch that. That was probably a better answer than I'm giving this time. Um, no, I, I, yeah, I was in the military. Now I'm not. Uh, and I write books for a living. There you go. Boom. There we go. Those very, are the interesting good. things about me. <laughs> so, all right, then, so let's move on. To, let's move on to the book. So, first time around, this book wasn't started as your. The first book recruited wasn't started as your work, was it? You kind of moved on no. to the project, and this time yeah, around, um, compromised was your baby. So, what? How? Is... How was that? How were the differences between you know with that happening? Yeah. Well, I mean, um, originally that was supposed to be a different author. Uh, I've been very open about that. Uh, I don't like to like. It wasn't like they uh, they started the book or anything. All they had done is write the pitch for recruited, um, but then they had a life emergency and they had to fall out. So I had to step in, um, and I picked up their pitch and turned it into a book. Um, so I still consider it my book, but yeah. it's true that it did not start um, as my baby. Um, but compromised, compromised completely different in the sense that I pitched it. Um, I'm the one who came up with everything in it, just about. Um, and so, yeah, this one's been mine from from the get go. And I guess the difference there is, you know, I'm kind of curious. Uh, I'm I'm sort of waiting to see what the difference is, whether people uh, hate the change or whether they like the fact that this one is me through and through. Yeah, yeah. To be to be honest, I'll, I'll just for I don't think anybody in chat. I don't think anybody's read it in chat. Maybe your friends. I'm not <gasps> sure. What you no. mean? You guys didn't read it the day it came out? No, yeah, I don't think well, so. Now I'm... Chat has anyone got picked it up yet or started? I know some people have pre-ordered. I uh, well, I'm gonna cry now. This is gonna get really ugly. I'm gonna be a grown ass <laughs> man crying. So, my my Twitch. initial impressions right from the get go are. It's it's a lot more emotionally deep for me. So yes. like and I don't know if you intended it to be like that compared to the first one, but even straight away when we we, we start off at the beginning with Maria and all the kind of changes that are happening at the, the, the beginning of this book, it's instantly emotional, like straight away. And I don't know if that's just because we already know these characters or but it it, it feels like it's been written to, to be Emo- very emotional straight from the, the get go. Um, well, first off, her name's Myra. Sorry, Myra. Not Maria. Sorry. And I, wow, wow. No, I'll I'm let that slide. I'm, I'm, mix, I'm mixing what? that. I'm mixing that up with somebody wow. else. No, I'm fine with you. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, no, I get there. People say Maria all the time. Yeah. For her. Um, th- it's. I mean, on the one hand, it is the fact the fact that it is a second book enables me to go more deeply emotional with it because I don't have to spend time being like, and here's like the ground level getting to know the characters. Um, <laughs> interviewer can't read. No, chat. It. That's because I listened. Um, I listened to the first book and I've had to read the second book. So, oh, no. <laughs> so look, he manages like half a page a day, and he's done his best. Yes, okay, I we have. should all support him for yeah. that. Yes, chat. Listen. To, um, listen. He has to sound every word out. It's a lot to ask, all I, right? Like, surprise enough, chat. Is you, how bad about you? Already know how bad I am at English. I am a terrible reader. Let's not let's what? not pretend that it would be otherwise. Like, you know, can I read? Yes, but very slowly. So, uh, I tell you what. Now, well, we're not going to do it right now, but uh, when I come on for my the raid, if it does happen, if it does. You're going to have to read part of the book out loud to chat. Okay. Okay. Deal. That's going to be part of the price for you. Deal. Right. Deal. I, I will do that. I will read the, I'll read the first, uh, uh, the, the first couple of pages for them. There you go. I want to, yeah, I want to see you have to read this stuff out loud. Right. No. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you know, there, there's like, back to the question, of course. Um, it is emotional in the sense that um 
I think it's the nature of partly the nature of sequels that you get to have more depth, like I was saying. Um, and I think it's also partly the fact that, yeah, this one's mine. And so I got to be like, oh, well, to me, I was talking to someone else and the way I summed it up was recruited was about making decisions, whether they ended up being smart ones or bad ones or tough ones, easy and compromised is about having to live with those decisions. Um, and I think that that sort of captures why it would be a more emotional story from the get go, because they're carrying weight and that's going to show on them. Yeah. That, that's literally straight away as well, chat. You, you, the first couple of pages, you instantly know they're carrying that weight from the previous, from the previous story. It car- it's, uh, it's very, very good. It's it's one of those things. Um, I have always, I don't actually love violence as a human being. Believe it or not, uh, I don't actually like it that people kill other people. Um, so I write these stories, and they are obviously very violent. They are obviously about gunslingers and doing what you have to do. And I'm not a pacifist. I do believe there comes a time when it comes down to sometimes having to take up arms to defend what's right. Um. But I do think there's always a cost. Yeah. And uh, that's something that I think is a is a very important theme of Compromised is our heroes live by the gun and that exacts a price from them. So anyways, yeah, that got, see, like, I, I wait, like, we're laughing and now nobody, yeah, like, now it's deep. Yeah, now I'm waiting. It was, it was deep. It starts off deep. The book starts off really deep. So it's, uh, it's good. It's well, thank good. you. I'm glad. I'm glad that there's that impact. I want there to be. Oh yeah, straight straight away. I sat there and I was like, I need to do. I need to get my homework done f- for this. And um, straight straight away, you know, it was it was really good to. It it cont- it, it it felt like it doesn't stop. Like you feel like you, it's gone from chap from chapter to the next chapter. You know what I mean? It doesn't feel like you feel like you could read them together. It carries on. Little time has passed, obviously, but you know, it, it carries straight on, and it's. It's yeah, it's it's definitely emotional right from the get go. I uh... that's really good to hear. I mean, like part of I'll be, it's a balancing act because I want people who haven't read. Well, that was one of the directives with this series was like if people haven't even read Recruited, they need to be able to pick up Compromised and read it and enjoy it. Yeah, they could. Yeah, you and, definitely could do that. Um, I mean, I was worried. Like, I, no, I'm not a perfect writer. I have no pretense that I am. Uh, so I didn't know whether I'd pulled that off. Uh, you know, you just don't know. Yeah, you do your best. Um, but I've had several reviews now that are from people saying, hell, I didn't even realize this was a series. I didn't realize there was a first one. I read this right. one first and they said, that's really good. They really enjoyed it that way. So also hearing from you that like you pick it up and it feels like it just kept going. That's right. really good to hear because it means I, maybe I actually managed to hit both notes. No, you did. Cause you get, you get enough of the callbacks and I guess they're not easy to do without trying to rewrite too much of the old, old ground that you've already written, but you get, especially at the beginning when it's kind of introducing to the characters again, you get enough of the callbacks to what previously happened. Uh, like you say, you, you you would want to read Recruited, but you didn't have to read Recruited. Like if someone's picked yeah. it up like, you know, oh, look, I'll buy this. It looks great and doesn't realize then they wouldn't have a hard time. And they could read the first one as a prequel afterwards anyway as well and would get filled in in the finer, the finer details, I guess. So Yeah, yeah that's what I try to tell people is like my goal was that it was that reading them together enriches them. Yes, but that you do not have to. You can get a good, fun read out of them either way. So when you was on last time, we already knew that compromise was coming. Yes. Is there? How, do we know there's a? Is there a third book coming? You know, I hope so. Um, I I cannot. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing about this industry. Um. Nothing is set in stone until it's done. Yeah. I could tell you, like, I, it's not even the fact that, like, I'm trying to keep a secret. It's the fact that I don't want to end up having lied to you. Of course. Yes. 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 Um, so, like, I could say, oh, yeah, like, oh, you know, they want it to happen. We want it to happen. Um, but, like, uh, there could be a change in management tomorrow and they decide that it's not worth the investment. And boom, off, off, off I toddle. Like yes. it's done. Yeah, yeah. Um. So yeah, like I, I think there's more, t- more story to tell. 
I don't think you can read this book and end read the end without being like, oh, he has more than he wants to do. Yeah. Um, but like, whether or not I'm going to get to, just fingers crossed. I hope so. Yeah. Well, that's good to hear though, because sometimes obviously people start, you know, they do something and they think, oh, I've done it twice now. I might not want to do it a third time. I want to do something else. But it's good to hear that you 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 know you want to carry it on if you if you're able to. So no, I, uh, in my heart of hearts, Myra's story has always been a trilogy. Yeah. All oh, right. Okay. Oh, a trilogy. <laughs> okay. That's good. That's good. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> you're like that's a sound bite, baby. Yeah. Yeah. That's, like, that's, that's quality product. All right. Um. So yeah. So that's... I was. So obviously you spend an amount of time with the guys over at Massive, who we know and love. Uh, yeah, they're how, good people. How was that uh, this time around? Was there any differences compared to the first time around? Was there anything that they kind of, with what they're doing with the game that they or the movie? We still don't know, we don't know anything about the movie yet. But was there any kind of tie-ins okay. or this time that they really want you to kind of include or or not or anything like that? I'm gonna save us some time later. I have nothing to do with the movie. I know nothing more about the movie than y'all do. I like. <laughs> It has nothing to do with me. I have no information. I'm not pretending. It's not a joke. I like, was thinking like nothing story elements, though. If there was like certain yeah, no, uh, world no, details. No, I know nothing about it. No, was so it... if there are, then it's a surprise to me when it comes. Was there, any... no, um, was there anything like, you know, like anything that's, that's happened in the game or any story that we're running already that we know about? Was there anything kind of that you kind uh, of had to play along with more, you know what I mean? Not spoilers of stuff to come, but like, you know, like, because we've had a lot of changes in the game. The story's just yeah. like a huge climax, you know? I'm just wondering if you had to play along with any of that. The Well, the games, I work very closely with what's happening with them. Mm -hmm. I was just being clear about the movie. <laughs> like, I, I know last time everybody was very excited at the idea that, like, maybe I had something to do with the movie, I'm, and I don't. Netflix I not I... hit you up yet? Are they still not hit no, you up? No, they oh. still haven't. Come on, Netflix. Get your act together. I know, Netflix! <laughs> Your boy, right here. <laughs> I could be bought. My loyalty is for sale. No, um... <laughs> no uh, it's... Uh, you no, know, like, the game... Like, working with the team at Massive, though, with the games, has been very give and take. It's been wonderful. Um, I mean, like, the first... The experience with the first book was that I... Um, was hitting the ground running. Like, we, I, like I said, I had to take it over midstream. And... Um, it was, it wasn't a bad experience, but it was a stressful one. I had to learn the lore. I had to adapt to a story that wasn't originally mine. I had to make it mine, and I had to do all of that on a relatively short time span. So this one was a more relaxed experience. It was a, they trust me more, I think, because they know, I mean, obviously they've seen what I can do. Um, I know them better, so I know knew better from the beginning how to write the way they wanted me to write. Um. And, uh, yeah, like, I, here's what I will say. Division and Compromised are not, like, an alternate universe. They're not something completely separate. They are happening in the Division universe. At the same time as the games, in the same world. And there is going to be, like, this isn't a maybe or a could be. There is going to be feedback between the two. You won't have to have experienced both to ever enjoy the other one. But there will be things, there will be nods. There will be elements that play back and forth. And together, again, it's just like the two books. They will enrich each other, and you will get a better total picture of what's going on in this world. Good answer that, chat. It's a good answer. It's, tra it's a trained answer, that, isn't it? There were no spoilers in there. It's a trained answer. That's a good answer. I'm just very good at my job. You are very, very good. The, the guys at Massive <laughs> are like, the guys are like, tick at Massive right now. They're like, you gave nothing away. Tick. <laughs> no yeah. yeah like i um here this is the closest i'm gonna get to giving something away there are scripts for the video game that i have consulted on for upcoming content and not because um not like i'm like writing them but because they involve elements that i created and they wanted to make sure they got them right in the same way that I hear from them about the elements they created, and we make sure I get those right. So it's give or take, like I said, and I think that that is the best. It's the best in uh, relationship I've ever had with an IP owner. 
good. That's good. Isn't that good news, chat? That's good to hear. That's good to hear. Because it, is it was it mainly with Lauren? Yes, Lauren's the best. Yeah. Lauren yeah. is my primary point of contact over there, and she is amazing. <laughs> AJ, save your question. <laughs> but I already know the answer to that, and you already deep down inside know the answer to that. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, okay, so... Um... So we have a newbie on the on the squad this time that kicks in pretty yes, early. So well, I've already heard about one newbie so far, uh, and a uh, new mate, Colin. Ah, oh, that's a... all right. I mean, I'm disappointed. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's you okay. can you can tell us about the second newbie, but Colin. Yeah. But Colin is um, uh, is described as a first wave agent. He is. He was part of the first wave into new york and that was super cool to get to include and write about and that, and he intrigues me because a lot happened with them first wave agents that from the from the first game mm -hmm. and a lot of them got up to got up to some not very nice things and things kind of, were very rough yeah new they york were very very rough wave. for these people and i just wonder if there's anything you would like to tell us about uh about our, our new friend colin and and so without, um, without being too spoilerific for, uh, for the book. Sorry, I shouldn't read chat while I'm... I should just not. Um, that no, probably uh, also happened, yes. They... Here's what I'll say. Um, one of the hallmarks of the Division series is kind of telling stories by flashback. Um, you spend as much time in the past figuring, like, you're presented with a scenario, and then you sort of catch up to it. You find out how did we get here? That's usually the question. Um, and I got to do that with Colin. And so if you have wondered what some of the experiences of being in New York in those early days for the first wave were like, you might get a glimpse of that through Colin. And that is all I'm going to say. No, that's that. good. That's good because, uh, and the reason I really wanted to highlight this is we have a huge amount, and maybe even more so, of fans of the Division 1 game that does tell that story for, for Kina. And the the fact that this book reaches into that part of the story and then, like you say, adds on to that and enriches that will probably bring people who might not have picked up recruited to, to the franchise. Like the division one law and story has always kind of been held super high, you know, and although the division two story now is still very, very good. The original Kena first wave story as is still, is still King in many people's eyes and probably always will be, you know, you get, sometimes you get that nostalgia for, something you know like like for me g1 or, transformers you know and, and things like that and no matter how many times they retell that story or whatever it it never gets knocked off its off its crown you know what i mean so the fact that we have a, a new agent in there that is that is first wave i think will uh will very likely bring uh bring new people who are fan fans of the, the series to it you know i hope so um when i first when i did the first book um, it was, I don't want like, this isn't me being upset about it. So don't misread it, but my hands were tied to some extent with a lot of like with stuff that I could include. Yeah. Um, I couldn't play with some of the really fun toys is how I would put it. <laughs> um, like, you know, what happened in New York and, uh, other stuff. God, I'm trying not to spoil anything. Um, but this time they had more confidence in me, like I said, so I really got to start breaking some of that stuff out. And that's, I mean, that's the goal. It's like, yeah, we've moved on. The Division One isn't all there is to the story anymore, but there's, it's still a part of it. It's still in a huge part of it. Like, even in the universe, a lot of what happened in New York in the early days happened before mass media collapsed. Yep. And so not only did, as you say, the the first wave get up to some rough stuff, that shaped how everyone views the division even now. 
Yeah. Because then the world went dark. That's the last thing they saw of them. Um, so not only do we have a first wave agent in the book, we're dealing with the fallout of some of the stuff that happened in the first wave on a large scale too, throughout the nation. Um, and I think, I think that's enough. I think I've said enough about no, that. I'm not really trying good. not to get myself in trouble. No, that's good. That's good. That's really good. So you mentioned we have a new, a second new uh, person on the block. Would you like to tell us anything about that person? Name them? Or... Yeah. Uh, her name is Yang Jia. And she was a member of the FBI's hostage rescue team. Um, she's a sharpshooter. And uh, she lost her entire family in the green poison. She is the sole survivor. Nice. Um, well, not nice, but yeah, rough. Yeah. <laughs> nice. nice for the story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and they... I, I don't I, like the way that Yang Jia and Colin merge with the old cell is important enough that I don't want to spoil it here. Like the question, did they know each other already or not? No, no. Okay. Um, I, one thing I do try to sell is that the division is not just like eight people. Yes, yes. Um, but like, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's me and that guy over there, and that's the division. That's all of us. Um, yeah, that's it. Uh, good. <laughs> Good job, everybody. The one dude saved a whole city. Um, that's not really the vibe I go for with the books, anyways. <laughs> um, but uh, the, I'm just no that 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 is sufficient. That Young Jia is an interesting character, and I, I was it was fun to get to write her, and I hope that um, people like her. Is there any particular weapons that this uh, this agent uh, uses? Or... I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> he's not answering that one chat i can't think what well, like is uh is there a sniper rifle y'all like I'm or just, something i'm I can't just think wondering of maybe like, why, maybe why i can it... i control left maybe i could the first thing i did was control f and uh wow and, and search for that particular weapon wow i did chat uh... i'm not gonna lie to you the first thing i did was control f and search for tac 50 <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't control F and search for um, what is those damn little cakes? The ones that you wanted me to put the, in the uh, the yellow the yellow cake. Yes, yes. I was gonna say like I I thought that would be more important to you, but uh, I, 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 also... I, I I still have no idea what what's attack fifty. You'd have to tell me about that. <laughs> um, we cannot confirm or deny if Twinkies or yeah. attack fifties are in the book chat. You'll have to yeah, you'll, you'll have, have to read, read it, it to find, to find that, that out. out. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, it sounds cool. Whatever it is, Tac Fifty—that's a cool name. Sounds like someone a should really... write a book. Of, yeah, yeah. Someone should include that in a book. They write. That I sounds think really, really deep. should do. Yeah, I think they really. It's a super secret. Yes, no spoilers, Ritzy. We promise no spoilers. What we talk about, chat. Is last time Thomas was on, we uh, one of the questions I asked was, it, you know, would it be possible to include the specialization weapons? Because although in the game, some of them have limited use. They are super cool, right? Because a rocket launcher, a grenade launcher, they, they are big daddy of weapons, basically, you know, not, not like your little pistols or anything like that. So I was like, from a writing point of view, would it be possible to, to get this in? And then there was a poll that just, you know, on Thomas's Twitter that uh, just maybe asked if anyone likes certain weapons and stuff. And then... That was unrelated. I just thought that it would be cool to know. <laughs> And then here we I, are, um, chat. Who who knows if they if it actually made it into the game, yeah, like, into the book. If or you not. start telling people that uh, I do polls for content, and that those might influence my content. That people would have to follow me, and that yes. sounds terrible. I, I, I think um, they should follow you anyway. I think that uh, it would be a good idea. I'm gonna I'm gonna break the rules a little bit and say, Big Tom, I want it to. Uh, you... Well, okay, stuff from the books is going to come to the games, but like, if you mean like equipment. Like a, I have asked them to include at least one thing from the books as a game, as something you could find in game, just because I think that would be fun. Uh, I haven't heard back, so go uh, pressure them. Go be like that would be really rad, and y'all should do it. Yeah, I think um, it should go, be. Go tell them that that's super cool. Yeah, that, would, that they that, should start. Yeah, to... I think they should do that because yeah, of course they should. That would be great because you do all that because in the books chat we do live the shd tech you know and it's 
way more graphic than what it is to us in the ga in the <laughs> game. So yes. like when it's when the drones are up and you're getting the full description of what that drone is doing, it, it's way better. Like and I said this previously when 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 Thomas came on, we we run a mission on the game in in fifteen minutes, perhaps right. You run through Lincoln in five minutes or or whatever. When you read that, there's so much more detail that we like it's like a slowed down movie scene to you rather than just a quick run through of the game like you see you read every bullet you you read every gunfire every every splat of a head or or whatever you know the of a head. <laughs> yeah like you <laughs> no yeah it turns out the human body can only take so much punishment before it just kind of turns to kibble yeah exactly um... so it, it's such more detail i think when you play the game because then, then you know then devices are so cool when you get to read them in this detail, it's what it's what makes everything so good, along with obviously the story and the characters and everything else. But you know, it's the detail we've always wanted, you know, from the game that we could probably never get from the game. Like you shoot someone in the head, you'd see a, a damage number and, and, and that's it, you know. But with the book you get. No, all yeah, that it turns detail, out if somebody you know. shoots you in the head, you die. It hurts. It's pretty yeah. wild. It's it's over at that point. <laughs> um No, they uh I can't remember if it, I think it was you, the last interview, we talked about the Firefly specifically. Yes, yes. Um, and uh, Fireflies are, I am told, not very good in-game. Correct, yes, they're rubbish. But I didn't give a shit, so I got to make it as cool as fuck yeah. uh, in the book. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's pretty much how all of it works, is like, I don't care if it's good in game. I just care if it's cool in the book. Like <laughs> I don't have to hit my damage numbers. I don't got to run my build to pass to the fucking though. I did get, I got one review and I'm sorry if that dude's here, I apologize, but it made me laugh so hard where he was like, the builds are pretty good. <laughs> and I was like, what, <laughs> what builds? Like, are you okay? <laughs> the, but, the um, yeah. Like he did pretty good loadouts for his agents. And I'm like, <laughs> thanks <laughs> good equipment choices yeah um but uh the point of a helmet is to make you feel better <laughs> yes while you're running towards that sniper zero protection when faced with a sniper in front of you it's um mm. it's if you fall off your bike that's the point of a helmet uh <laughs> turns out a 50 cal round goes right through that bitch yeah It'll there's go there's no helmet block. helping Your you helmet's with that. not going to save you. Yeah, yeah like definitely that's, uh -huh. not. <laughs> so uh, we talked we talked about the games a little bit before. Have you uh, have you dipped into Division Two since we last spoke? I have played it. Um, I played it last time we talked to. Yeah, I always said I'm not good at these games, so I do not play it for joy <laughs> uh, because there is no joy in getting my ass beat constantly. <laughs> but I do play to get things right. I yeah. play for accuracy. I play for research. Um, I watch Let's Plays a lot, too. Yeah. Oh, God. This is one of my... I spent six hours. This is not a joke. It makes me sound like a moron. I spent six hours watching Let's Plays to make sure that the sound of a sticky bomb was right. Nice. It nice. shows up in one paragraph of Recruited. <laughs> one. <laughs> I'm a lunatic. So yeah, like I have played the game to make sure that I get things right. That's right. Well, that's good. Well, Ritzy, that's because you like abuse. I'm not like you. <laughs> no, like, look how they treat you here. Bucky, it's, uh, it's, it's one thing he, I don't know if you've read the first book, um, book, but it is one thing that I can say about the books is that the detail is is phenomenal like it it literally feels like i said what i was saying before is it's the the whole part of the game that we want more detail on and that we see and hear every time we play in the book and that it's it's the same you know that it the book is the same as me booting up the game and playing now like they they are so intertwined that it's not yeah. only the same universe the same story the same time the gear's the same, the characters, you know, our age could be one of the characters in one of these books. Like, you know what I mean? It, it is, the detail is, is absolutely precise. It's really, really good. Thank you, Mike Heck. That's very, um, 
I appreciate that. No, it's good because I'm a massive fan of I'm a massive fan of the of, of all of the division, like you know, and it's it, the game has some issues. It has done for a while, but I, it's not just the game that being a fan of the division is for for me. You know, I'm a fan of the story, I, you know, and and everything else that comes with it. And these hit the nail on the head with the stories that we've already already had. I have to give y'all credit, like this fandom credit. Um. I have fuck all to do with the game, like the design, the all that shit. Nothing to do with it. I don't get input on it. They don't ask me things. I don't, um, like that's not my world. And nobody blames me for it, which is not true of every IP I've ever worked on. <laughs> um, it's really nice to not have people in my comments being like, fucking fix, nerf this. And I'm just like, this. what the fuck? <laughs> like, I, who do you think you're talking to? Like, uh, no. Why am um, I still crashing? Fix the crashes, man. Yeah. Come on. And I'm like, I, what do you want from me? I don't. If I had a genie, I wouldn't waste it on you, motherfucker. Like, <laughs> get the fuck out of here. Uh, but yeah, like that. I mean, no, I, I haven't gotten that. It's been pretty much all my interactions with the division fan base have been really great. Um, oh, so I'll take it. I'll no, take that's it. really really good. So last time you was here. Uh, in the first book, you had a favorite character, Brenda, I believe. Yes. Who is your favorite character this time around? Uh, is it? I mean, it's it cheating be the, to say Myra. Say again, sorry. I think. I said, I, th I think it's cheating to say Myra because because oh, that's my favorite character first time around. Well, it's yeah. cheating for me to say it because I create like Myra is uh, the main viewpoint character. She's not the only viewpoint character this time, but she is. Um. Uh, you know, she, she is the heart of these stories. And also, I think Myra draws a lot on my personality. Yeah. Um, you mean Maria? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Maria. I uh, mixed two I, letters up, chat. I read it here. I've got a lot going on trying to read. Like, come on. Yeah. He, we already covered this. He's barely, he's practically illiterate. Give yes. him a break. I listen, I, to, I, I listen to the audio book first time around. Doesn't make me any less of a person. It's not his fault that nobody gave him anything more complex than a picture book until he was 15. Yeah, it's my auntie's name. Come on. <laughs> but, um, but then saying that, Myra was my grandma's name, so I really should have got it right. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Spectacular. God rest uh, her soul, though. She's not with us anymore. Also, so I'm going to break the rules again uh, for the sake of selling and say, yes, Compromised is out. You can get it in digital form. Audiobook and paperback for the US on the 20th. And paperback for the UK uh, next month. Yeah. We can keep, keep spamming that in chat. If someone knows the answer and someone asks, just keep spamming it. Let them know. That is a All delightful mods, choice. Grab, grab the link from Amazon and just keep posting the link. Um. Yeah. Like the, I, Please, please buy my book. <laughs> that would be remarkable. Um. That would be delightful. I would, would just like to add, chat, as much as I would love you to buy the book, if you're... If you are a non-reader and you want to experience this, the audio book is fantastic. Uh, no, the, the readers, the, yeah, yeah, the leader, the, the the reader, sorry, the lady is absolutely wonderful at it. Like I listened to Recruited from start to finish, and it was absolutely brilliant. So you know, like if you really want to experience it, and you're not you're not an actual reader, but you want to get in on the stories, definitely pick up the audio book as well. It's um, it's brilliant. It's absolutely good. Or if you want to do both and listen to it in your car and then read while you're at home on the pooper or whatever, I would definitely recommend I Buy multiple copies. Yeah, exactly. Why not? Yeah, definitely do both. Buy six copies and just put them around your house so that you can pick it up whenever you feel like that. Yeah, just like, I'm on shelves like I've got, like here next to the Christmas tree, you know, wherever, you know. Buy them for your Tons friends for Christmas. Like, great present. I answered it forever ago. I said that, that oh, y'all aren't listening to me. Yeah, audio, <laughs> there is an audible. And yeah. there will be, um, yeah. There, it, the re, she, the lady does great. She does, uh, yeah. like Very it's. Good. She's it, she she brings a lot of emotion to it, which I think is really good. So we digress from your favorite character. Oh, my favorite character, right? Because um, <laughs> it's so easy to digress. It is easy. <laughs> so. I think for this book, my favorite character is Colin. Ooh. 
And a sneaky suspicion he ended up might be my favorite character as well. A sneaky suspicion. Um, Colin is. I'm not gonna get too spoilery. I'm not gonna get spoilery at all, really. But um, Colin is someone who he he's the kind of person who wants to do the right thing. Um, like that's important to him. It's not about. And I don't mean like just what's he like. He doesn't leave people behind. He doesn't just care about getting the job done. Yeah, he not like a, not like an people. anti-hero right thing. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's um the closest. Him and Myra are the ones that I think have strong moral centers, and I really like both of them for that. Brenda's the opposite. I like Brenda for the opposite reason. Brenda is uh not a bad person. Which could be but a little, to her, a little the bit mission's cold. what comes first. Yeah, she can be, yeah. yeah. Um, and the worst thing about her is that you would never know it because she smiles the whole time. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. yeah Ear-licking can... ASMR can be purchased from me on my OnlyFans. <laughs> uh, I will read the book to you if you have enough money. And I will gently tickle whatever you want me to tickle the whole time. Um, no, all right. Enough! You're distracting me, chat. What's your next question? <laughs> Alright, so was there was there anything that you wanted to include that you didn't get to include? Yes. Can you tell us what that was? No. Ah! Oh, too spoilery? Or, or maybe coming in book three? Uh, I could, uh, there is no book three. <laughs> so there's nothing to talk about I said maybe I said maybe no, no I am telling you that there's nothing to talk about because it's not a real thing um, so yeah like I mean obviously it's only um, you know it's it's one book I didn't get to do all the cool things I want to do gosh I hope I get the chance there's nothing not, you can't even give us anything anything at all there are still toys in the toy box I haven't gotten to break out. Uh, and gosh, I hope I get to. That's all I can tell you, man. What about maybe new toys that you perhaps invented? Uh, I did get to do that. I got to. Both of the factions which are presented in this book are 100% my creations. And that's where we need them to come to the game chat. That would that would make my day. Yeah, that would really um, be. <laughs> y'all are just trying to ask questions that I don't know the answer to now. <laughs> um, like Div three, I, <laughs> Div three. Yeah. Do you think they would tell me if they did have a plan? Like they don't talk. To... <laughs> <laughs> they don't, again. I have nothing to do with game development. Nothing. <laughs> so. The closest I come is that I influence the story in the other direction. And even then, like, I wouldn't know if it was for three or for a DLC or for... All I know is that, that some stuff's going to cross over. That's it. Um, And some of the toys do vibrate. <laughs> I mean, I don't know that it's something you would enjoy having up against you, but uh, they they will shake the bones right out of your head. Um, yeah. But yes, uh, I would, I would love to get to do, um, more. More toys. Yeah, I want to have, well, like, there is still, yeah, there's still some fun stuff. I want to get into the, the big overarching plot. I haven't gotten to do that yet. Um, I will say, I will say, I know you haven't finished this book yet. But they let me get away with more than I expected them to. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, this is not a joke or anything. I wrote sections of this book expecting them to cut them. Um, I was like, I'm going to include this just because I think it's really cool, because I think the fans would love it. But I fully expected them to come back with, what do you think you're doing? Uh, and... No, they let me keep them. Nice. Um, the most they would be like is, oh, can we tweak it a little bit to make it a little bit more in line with what we were doing? And I was like, oh, yeah, cool, totally. So um, there's stuff in there that I think is going to surprise long-term fans and that they'll be really excited to see. 
Was the and, and I fully expect the answer to be no to this, but was there anything cut that you can tell us about? Cut that I could tell you about. Oh yeah, I mean like there's stuff that wouldn't be like but I can't tell you about anything fun. But I can tell you stuff that got cut. Like I <laughs> uh like that, yeah, they uh, tons of stuff gets cut. Tons. Ends up on the cutting room floor. Like uh character scenes or whole chapters, um Really, the whole way. chapters. Yeah, that's part of the job. Right. I didn't realize so much would get cut. I mean, I'd like obviously, I thought maybe like paragraphs and scenes and stuff and things like that, but I didn't realize perhaps like the bigger, the bigger. So, how much do you actually write then? Like, how how big's the book in? So, oh, I've got recruited. this one. This one's longer. Um, recruited was like seventy-eight thousand words, and this one's like eighty-six thousand. And how many do you think you um, actually wrote? Oh, uh, over a hundred, I would Ooh. imagine. Right, okay. I also, uh, I mean, this is a little personal, uh, so forgive me, but I suffer from a mental illness. Um, and I had a breakdown in the middle of writing this one. And I went through and deleted 20,000 words because I decided they were bad. Um, were, were, were they actually bad or just because you decided on that? Who um... knows? They're gone now. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, and that was a really stupid thing for me to do and it slowed it down and made everything much harder because um, mm -hmm. it turns out middle illness is actually not rad and it doesn't make you more creative it just makes life harder it makes things Sucks. worse yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah like I mean, stuff gets cut all the time and whether by me by my editor by the team there's whole chunks that you um, was there anything you were particularly dis seen. disappointed about that got cut though was there anything that you, you See, that's a more interesting question. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, really not. Like I, like I said, they gave me so much free reign that I was shocked. Uh, the stuff that did get cut, I, I ended up agreeing with that it was the right decision in the end. Um, like there was, I, I included some new SHD tech. Um, that hadn't been seen before. Um, and it ended up getting cut, not be not actually because like it wasn't allowed. It just ended up getting cut because it ended up um, not really being important, I guess. Like it was just sort of wasting the reader's time, right? Um, and like so, I was like, oh yeah, they, that that's a good point. Like we should get that out of there. What, what did it do? Um, what did it do? Oh, it was. Uh, you, do you know the exoskeletons that the military is working on? Yes. To let, yeah, for like soldiers to be able to carry. Yeah, they could lift heavier, heavier, weights. heavier yeah. weights and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, the idea was that like there was a prototype version of that, um, and that someone had it. It just ended up not being material to the story. I yeah. still think it's a cool idea. It is. I hope yeah. that so eventually that will be a sort of thing that you might see. Yeah. Um. But when it does get introduced, it needs to be introduced in a way that's that matters. Yes. And this wasn't it. <laughs> they were just moving some some boxes in a storeroom. <laughs> yeah. Well, no. What it ended up being was that like a character had it, but it never ended up mattering. Ah, right. Okay. Yeah. So it was just yeah. kind of like, oh, look at this thing. I'm carrying this cool thing around all of the yeah, time. Yeah. Like yeah. The... Okay. Who gives a shit? It just wasn't important. Um. So it was wasting time. So it went. But right. gone. But like I said, I agreed with it. No, so it was a little sad in the sense that I thought, I think it's a neat idea. Yep. I do hope that like, and that's sort of the the fringe on, I thought it was a good fit in the sense that that's the fringe on which the games operate. That kind of technology where it's like, we don't quite have it figured out in the real world. It's one step further. Yep. It's not two steps further because then you, lo you lose that feeling of being like right at the cutting edge. Um, so I thought it was a good fit in that sense, but it just wasn't right for the story. And in the end of, with me, the story always wins. No, that's right. I agree. That's good. No, that's really, really good. All right. So I think I've got my last question and I should have asked it earlier on because it was a follow up from the calling question. Now, I've not, now obviously I've not finished the book. So without, without spoiling. Boo. Without, Boo him. I know, Boo him, chat. chat. Boo know. him for not finishing the book. Rub I've had it for I, chat as well. I had it for a long time. I'm rubbish at reading. I am really, I, I have, I have just not got the mental capacity to be a reader. I I I I answered Mental the capacity. I haven't got That's it. Such I, a terrible thing to say about yourself. It's, true. it's like, not. 
on your Twitter, I answered the question, Joey, you said about writing before, and it was like, yeah. I am not a good writer, and I am certainly not creative enough to be a writer. Like, I was just like... Well, not everybody is a born... It has to... to, to... <laughs> it was just like... Sorry, I set chat loose on you. This is great. Uh, I'm, I'm loving it. Um... But uh, no, what I was meant to ask was, Colin, did he Colin. ever have a relationship with Mr. Kino? No. No. Okay. Or not that it comes up in the book. Oh, okay. okay. That's what I was kind of wondering um, about. With him being first wave, I was just kind however, of... However... Oh, yeah. However, no. that doesn't mean that Keener's actions didn't impact his life. Yes, of course. Yeah. yeah. So... Exactly, Kosh. I'm, I'm glad you're on my side. I, I like you, Kosh. She's supposed to... Jenny. I'm gonna call... Yeah, I'm calling you out by your real ass name. Jenny... You're supposed to be on my side. That's no, what? but seriously, yeah. I, I want to be really clear. Sorry, let me say something. Um, because I'm teasing you, and I, I could be taken the wrong way, and I genuinely don't want that. If someone has dyslexia or some difficulty reading, or just like it's not something that comes naturally to them, that's fine. Re do the audiobook. Like, anybody who gives you shit for that for real is a douche. Fuck them. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with getting your... I do this for the love of the story. I don't give a fuck where it's printed or how you take it in. Like, that's, no, that's rad. Um, so, like, yeah, I, I want to be clear that I am not, um, yeah, against audiobooks on any level. No. I love them. Uh, honestly, I'll, them myself I, I'll, be, I'll be perfectly honest, chat. That is why I have not been able to finish the book. Because I am, I, and I'll be perfectly upfront, I'll be perfectly honest, I am a bad reader. I am a bad reader. And I get to, and when I read, it's fine at first. I can get so far. But then sometimes I get to the point where I'm reading but not taking it in, if that makes sense. So I so I read a page, but I have no idea what I've just read, even though I've read it, if that if that kind of makes sense. Like the, it doesn't go in. And the and I'm kinda of limited in my capacity to how far I can go. It's what it's what I meant before when I was saying like I've not got the capacity for reading, like but I can only well, go so um... so far before it, it just becomes words on a page and the book is, as I said before, like where I've read it small, the first, the first kind of part, it's wonderful straight away, right from the, right from the get go, and I don't want to spoil that experience. And I had a, I had a, I was all right last time. I had the audio book. I could, I could get it finished, you know. In the times when I wasn't reading it, I could skip to the audio book and and do both and get it, get it done and do more homework essentially. And I said to to Thomas previously before we did this, I said. I haven't done as much homework. I've not. I've not finished it. Um, and it, I told him I it doesn't matter. It's my. It was my capacity for for reading that's let that's let me down. So I hope that that has. Yeah, that, like I just want to be really clear that I was just teasing. Like, no, I know. Uh, I know I you were. Care. Yeah, I know you were. Yeah, I know you don't were. Care. It's uh, no, like um. But I know lots of people who like the experience of a book. Like somebody just said, they like the way it feels. Yeah. I love books beyond reading. Like, yeah, I love the experience of having like a paper book. Yes. Well, people do um, that. That's why people don't like libraries. Kindles as yeah. well. People like the physical article, you know. And, and even, but yeah, it, like th there are yeah. audiobooks, um, absolutely, and I want people to enjoy them. Uh, I'm supposed to get promo copies soon of the audiobook, I think, and I'll be doing some giveaways on my Twitter, so keep an eye out for that. Um, but yeah, you can absolutely go pre-order them now, and the the audiobook will be out on the twentieth. Yeah, they can guarantee though. That is my promise to you, chat. On the twentieth, I will be listening all day. On the twentieth to finish it off for sure. Absolutely. Next time I'll just wait to come back until after the audio book comes out. We'll plan that, <laughs> and then you can listen to it, and we'll have. A, it'll be good. I pushed you. I made you move too fast. No, no, you're fine. Honestly, you're fine. You're absolutely fine. Um, right. So let's open it up to chat. Then chat. Serious questions first. Serious questions. Yes, please. <laughs> let's start with the serious questions. So if you if you joined in halfway through, that's fine. Don't don't be scared of asking anything. Uh, yeah, I'll, I mean, I'll make fun of you. But don't be scared. <laughs> ask ask away. Embrace there is it. no Let there is happen. no bad questions, chat. There is there is no there is no bad Chicken questions. Chicken or steak? Um, for a staple, chicken because I don't want cancer. Uh, for a treat, steak. I would eat a good steak as a treat anytime. But red meat gives you cancer, and I don't want to die that way. <laughs> it's a rough first question chat come on right there was loads of questions how good before. are you at fighting for love um <laughs> Tom. 
you will not find anyone alive who has fought me in the name of love. So let that be a warning to you. Let me get the, let me, there's someone asking for the link for Amazon. Let me get that in chat. I mean, look, I went on a quest for Ritzy's love, and I completed it. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure by that standard, I played a lot of video games. I'm pretty sure that means it's forever. Um, oh, there, Huey, are you going to author any new books in the future that are not division related? I would love to. Uh, the the problem is getting someone to pay me to do it. Uh, <laughs> I mean that sounds really crass, um, but yeah, like I, I I would be delighted to to. This has been a wonderful experience, um, but I do have my own stories I want to tell, and I'd love to play with other universes too. So maybe eventually, yeah, fingers crossed. So um, how does that work now for you then? So now you've you've kind of wrapped this one up. What? What do you kind of do? Well, to, I didn't to say we'd your, wrap this up. You get your next work. What? How do you? You know what I mean? How do you? How do you? Uh, y'all don't worry about that. Y'all, what y'all do is you read my books and you, if you enjoy them, you tell people about them, and everything else takes care of itself naturally. Uh, so what else did we get? We got, we got some questions in there. How you find the link? Yeah, I'm gonna let you filter for me. Yeah, I'll filter through. Yeah. Uh, so that was. How long did it take for Fairlo? <laughs> How long did it take for Fairlo's leg to heal up? <laughs> uh, that's, that's not a related question. And we know it's healed now. I think, unfortunately, the problem is that, like, uh, it hasn't been six years. It's, I mean, it's been a problem in the sense that the books have now gotten way ahead of, like, where the game's storyline is. Um... <laughs> Like, what I'm writing exists in the nebulous future from the game's point of view. <laughs> uh, so, like, it's not... It, the problem isn't that it's taken six legs for her... Le six years for her leg to heal. The problem is this has been going on for six years and only just now has her leg healed. <laughs> it's, a, it's a bad healer. Bad healer. Or bad treatment, let's face it. Yeah, there's not a lot of doctors left. Yeah, they all died. It's a problem with being the first one in when somebody gets uh Yeah. Green Pies and White Tomorrow. Uh which of the two books uh, is your personal favorite? Compromised. Um, I think that it uh I mean it, it, that's just natural. I, I like I said, I got to pitch this one and so it was my baby from the very beginning. And as much as I enjoyed writing recruited, it was a stressful thing. It was a stressful job with a very tight schedule. Uh, while this one, I had more chance to relax and um, got to do more fun stuff with it. So yeah, like it's just easy for me. Like I, I consider Compromised my, the better book. How, how's the pitch going for the third one? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> he's good, Chai. He's good. Um, that's a really cool idea, though. Pitching for the third one, I you think, should. Uh, I, I definitely think you should. I think you should consider it. If you um, if you want to see that happen, what you should do is buy this book. Yes, everyone buy this book. Probably just go and do it now. Like, you know, I would definitely... Because that's what makes more books come out. Yeah, I would definitely get on Amazon now, guys. Pre-order everything. All versions. Uh, Q asks, what is your shoe size as Ryberg has tiny feet? That is the weird... No, it's not the weirdest. I take that back. Um, In fact, I we did ask Ryberg. Nine. I'm not a big guy. I'm 5'7 and I wear a size 9 shoe. It's a US size nine. Yes. So that's a UK size eight, then you're one size bigger. So, okay. There you go, Q. Are you happy with the answer? <laughs> Rissy says, says Tom Parrot is the love of my life. I better be. Uh Papa wants to know if you Let's have see. if you have nice legs. Um No. Where are all these serious questions, chat? Come on. Uh, okay, uh, Tom, do you do push-ups on your knees like Tickle? Nope, they don't let you do that at basic training. Uh, Tom's heartburn. 
All right, so Huey asks another sensible question. Thank you, Huey, for the sensible question. So where do you draw your inspiration from? Inspiration. I From, from the ether. I, I drink it from a well. I actually have captured one of the muses, and uh, she's in a cage, and I consult her. <laughs> no, I don't. Um, I made a deal with the devil. Where do I get my inspiration from? I... That is an excellent question. I think that's one of those things that any writer is going to be a little bit stumped by. Um, like stuff sort of just congeals. Like I do a lot. I read a lot of books. I read the news. Um, I research the games. I research whatever IP I'm working on at the time. And once I sort of hit a critical mass, as I always tell people, there's a moment with every IP I work with, I read and read and read and read, and there's a moment where it clicks and I become a fan too. And usually when that happens, it's very clear to me what kind of story I think would be cool to tell. Does that answer the question? No, that's a good, yeah, that's, no, that's that's a good answer. That's a good answer. Yeah, I think that's kind of what he was reaching for. Like, how did you come up with the story, I guess? Like, you know, so once you become a fan, then I guess that's easy at that point. Well, not easy, but you know what I mean. I'm happy our former colonizers are out of the world. I, know, I, was, I was just wasn't sure uh, if I should be asking that question because I'm deeply disappointed that England are out of the World Cup now when they got robbed by France. Like, you know. Here's the honest answer to that. I didn't know y'all had lost until I got into your stream today and people were talking about it. Yeah, I'm very upset by it. I almost cried. And uh, I, I hate to hurt anybody's feelings, but football means jack to me. <laughs> Sorry. He's only saying that because US went out ages ago. That's all he's saying. Uh, did we? Yeah, like I didn't know that. Uh, <laughs> I believe you. Like, yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, 50J says, are you a pitcher and not a catcher? But he says it with a funny face. I guess that's a leading question. Uh, yeah, I, th I think I, gr I grasp what he's asking. Um, For you, Jay, I'll be whatever you want, baby. <laughs> Uh, is there a chance of having an agent? <laughs> I thought this was a serious question. Is there a chance of having an agent in the third book who can't hit headshots? I feel like my agents miss all the time. Yeah. I, feel, I feel that's a question. Do they not? <laughs> like, I, I feel like that. Well, the only one who nails headshots is usually like is like Young Jot in this one. Everybody else just kind of does their best and usually fucks up. I'm not asking any more trolling questions, chat. I'm not asking booze or cocaine. Like, come on. Uh, you know. uh, booze. Or booze and if cocaine. If I'm chilling. Yeah. And cocaine, if I'm on the town. Like, what, are you fucking. Do you guys even try? Here we go. Come this, on. This is a good one. This is a good one. In, <laughs> in total, how long did it take you to write Compromised? Uh, and do you work on other projects at the same time? Um. Yes, I do. Let's. I'll start with the ending there. Uh, yeah, I work on other stuff at the same time. It's usually my own stuff, but uh, normally, though, a novel takes up the majority of my writing time, um, like 90% of it, and the rest is just sort of me no noodling around with my own stuff. Um, and it took me four months to write Compromised and a, m a month or two for the edits. That's pretty quick, actually. That's quicker than I thought. Yep, we are. Oh my god, this is the fastest I've ever had to do. Like this, y'all. Maybe maybe it's not clear. We've had two books come out within a year of each other, and that's crazy fast by publishing standards. Like crazy fucking fast. Yeah, that's that's ah! really good. That's really good. You alright? Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> How you doing? I'm alright. Yeah, I'm sorry. That's good. Just wondering if the within the next six months we'll know about the third one then. I don't know what you're talking about. No, I don't know either. I'll keep, Sounds made up. I'll keep poking that fire. You should... Um, I can tell you one thing. If nobody buys Compromise, there definitely won't be a third one. I, I'm sure everybody in chat is going to buy Compromise, right, chat? If you're so not, I'm just it, saying, like, it, no, I, I'm, I'm not trying to tell anybody to do anything. All I'm saying is... If nobody buys compromise, there definitely won't be a third one. It's if a, it's a straightforward statement of fact. What what will be really good is they'll they'll all buy it, 
and then they have a chance to win a signed copy and then they can gift the one they purchased for a, a wonderful Christmas present, I think. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you get a signed copy, you don't want to read that one because that's going to mess it up. Yeah, so you got to keep it nice that's and That's bullshit. Pristine. It's never going to be worth anything. Totally read from it. But uh, yeah, whatever gets you to buy as many copies as I can. Yeah. Because I am a mercenary. <laughs> uh, Big Tom asks, he, he, he's already answered this, I think. What are your thoughts on the Division movie? Um, I think it would be cool. Me too. Uh, but I don't know. Like, I li- I know y'all think I'm hiding something about this. I literally don't know anything more about it than y'all do. I know that it's a maybe thing. That's it. I don't even know if it's a real thing. Ooh. Um, this is a good. This is a good question, though. This is a really good question. If you, a if, question. Yeah. if you were to do your own movie adaption, who would you cast? Oh. Oh, we had a thread about this on yes. Twitter a while back. I've seen that, but, yes. And I can't remember who I did. Uh, go, you know what? No, I'll do a new one. I haven't done, I did one for Recruited. I haven't done one for Compromised. That takes thought. It's very important. So go follow me on Twitter and I'll do a thread about it soon. And that will answer your question. Good question, Tom. Good question. Uh, Agent says he's definitely going to go and buy both books. Nice one, Agent. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, very appreciated. Thank uh, you so much. Bruja, uh, as a law enforcement officer who has experienced similarities of based off the division story during the last few years, has Mr. Parrot ever considered taking inspiration from the first responders that could influence the story? Um... On one level, I already do, in the sense that uh, inev- almost inevitably, we actually talk about it a little bit in this book, is that first responders, a lot of first responders became division agents, or a lot of division agents come from first responder backgrounds just because the two line up so well. And that happens um, in this book, right? Yeah. Um, the, But if you mean, like, would I take... Uh, like personal accounts of people that the things people have been through and then like draw inspiration for events. Um, I would have to be very careful about doing that because of, <laughs> the stuff first responders go through often involves deaths. It involves tragedy, it involves trauma. And if I was going to pull from that, I would risk hurting someone, a real person, and that is not something I ever want to do with my writing. Yeah. Rawson supposedly finished the script back in May. I hope they move on it soon. I thought it was really close to being finished, uh, Rogue, to be honest. Someone did an I mean, interview. that would be cool. But, yeah, I know. Um, a question for me, actually, that I didn't get to ask before. So when... Warlords of New York came out. Um, the division went kind of full hog on it. They they did some very short stories on the new rogue agents that got introduced to the game. Mm-hmm. Would that ever be something that you would be interested in doing in more of an animated format? Oh, I'd love. I would love to branch out into yeah, yeah, absolutely. I would love to do. I would love to write for games. I would love to write for cartoons. I would love to write for movies. I will write anywhere that someone hands me a paycheck and says, yeah. could we please get some words from you? They, um, they went under the radar a little bit. They were really good, but they were, I think they only got kind of released on YouTube and stuff and things like that. I think they went under the radar. They, they were really good, but I thought the stories you're telling would kind of suit something like that really, really well. That would be neat. Um, I mean, I, I, there's not been even so much as a rumble of such an idea. Yeah. Um, Though I will say one thing that I think would be really cool. This is not super connected to that. It's just something that I also think that they should do eventually. Um, have, any, have any of y'all read World War Z? I've seen the movie. Uh, <laughs> well, the movie has nothing to do. Ugh, don't get me started. Uh, the movie has nothing to do with the book. Oh, right, but okay. Except that it involves zombies. Okay. Um, but there, the World War Z is told as a... Uh, a collection of survivor accounts from after the zombie war, right? All right, okay. From all over the world. And I think it would be really cool 
if they did something like that for the division world and did it as an anthology to pull in a bunch of writers to sort of go around the world and see the impact of the green poison as it swept the the globe yeah. i think that would be really cool yeah that would be good, uh, we get we get that sometimes with some of the side missions in the game more, more so in the first game they didn't do it so much in the second game but in the first game we had little side missions that would show an impact of when it broke out like rioting and stuff and what happened to people and how people lost their families and that would yeah that would be really cool it would fit really well with uh with with all the division stuff that goes on that would be yeah yeah because i mean like uh even the stuff obviously my books show us parts of the country that we haven't gotten to yet but there's a whole world out there and um honestly i think it would be neat to okay this is pie in the sky. No one's ever talked about this. It's not going to happen. I'm just spitballing stuff that I think would be cool. Just want to be clear about that. But I think it would be cool to do that anthology and then have a mission for each survivor that you could play through in the game. Oh, well, that'd be good. So you could actually live through the stories they're telling as the person. I think that would be rad as fuck. Yeah, that would be really But, good. um... There's so much cool stuff that could be done with like transmedia collaboration. And I would love to live in a world where that was more of a thing. Yeah, that would be really good. We had, we had some missions a little bit like that. that were a bit more story driven. They were called classified missions when the game first came out, but they never really went anywhere. They kind of just told a little bit of a story. They were more detailed. They were very easy. There were no replayability to them, but, um, something like no replayability. Really cool. Yeah. Ugh. Like, you mean there's no pants to grind for? <laughs> no, there was nothing. No, it was a one and done situation. Oh, lame. Yeah. It was... Uh... <laughs> Sorry, that's my go-to. Like, I had somebody one time be like, why didn't you stick closer to the game mechanics with your stuff? And I was like, what, do you want me to have them kill 100 people until they find a pair of pants they <laughs> yeah, like? Like, they get what the fuck really do you quickly. want from yeah. yeah, like, no. Like, I... Sorry, that's just not how. That's not a good story. Them killing themselves and, re a game. And, and respawning isn't quite going to write yeah. very well. Yeah, it's a. I mean, it'd be an interesting thing to write, but that's not what the division's about. <laughs> um, uh, what is my favorite group in the division? I guess that's he a means fun one. Faction, right? You mean faction, Papa? Yeah. Uh, I my favorite group. I would like to find... Okay. I'll see. I'm, I'm having to be careful. Um, a tricky question. A tricky question. I don't like them. But I find... The villains I find most sympathetic are the outcasts. Yeah. Because if I was taken away from my family and put into a camp and then locked in and left to die i would come out wanting to burn the world down too yep i agree me too so i get where that comes from like i they're still villains they still have to be stopped but like out of all the the villains i find them to be the ones where i'm like yeah like i get it um and i like killing true sons because fuck fascists <laughs> so yeah. What else we got? Uh, are you writing the book to coincide with the release of Division Three? No, Dangot. Uh, no. Third book equal. Thank you, Drolock. No, though, like, tell you what, man. If they write Division Three and they want someone to novelize it, you and they ask you, who should we get? You tell them Tom Parrot. All right. Yeah. Because they, I guarantee y'all will know about it before I do. <laughs> Ritzy, <laughs> I'm not good. I, ah, mm, Ritzy. Uh, I have played. I mean, I completed the story have because that was what was important to me. Have you completed up to the latest part of the story they added recently? No. Oh, sorry. I should. I completed the base story. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah the the dlcs i have uh followed like i follow okay this is going to be a terrible i just watch people play them like I, that's how i keep up <laughs> um 
that and stuff like NGN does really great summaries, and so I'll just be like, oh, okay, that's what I missed. Like, that's <laughs> that's the honest truth. And then if I need clarification, I go straight to the massive team, and I'm like, so what happened there? <laughs> he gets the inside track on the story. What are you, level 10? <laughs> Yeah, see, this is what I'm talking about. Like, you guys, I I never said it was a good idea to have me on for a raid. That was never my suggestion. Good, It's a great idea, Tom. It's a great idea. God damn it. <laughs> it's a terrible idea, obviously. Uh, so, yeah. Any more questions, uh, think, chat? Yeah. Any more, any more? up on the... He, yeah. We'll call it, we'll call it at 4, well, from 4 p.m. for me, 9 p.m. for you. Yeah, three minutes. So we have three minutes. One more question, maybe. One more good question. If somebody's got one in their pocket. See, Aaron... <laughs> well, I will, I will talk about this a little bit. Aaron Keener is... I'm not sure Aaron Keener's heart is in the right place. Um, I think he thinks it is. But, uh, yeah, like he's, uh, I don't think Aaron Keener's playing with a full deck. I don't think he ever was. <laughs> no. He was very capable, very smart, very inspiring. But, um, I, I would not have wanted to live in a world where Aaron Keener got his way about things. Yeah. Uh, 50J, that's kind of a good question. Have you met Yannick and Strokes, his glorious beard? I haven't face to face met anyone on the team, unfortunately, because they are in Sweden. And I am in the United States. Yeah. But when they feel like inviting you to the studio, you know, all paid up, then, if they, you know, if you want a buddy to tag along with you, then I'm only an hour away on a plane. And then, you know, it's like, okay, oh, I come and bring my mate Tickle. I'll be like, yeah, yeah, yeah I'll be, I'll, I can make time for that. Yeah, that's exactly what I'll do. I'll yeah. say, can I bring my mate Tickle? And they'll be like, who? <laughs> no. No, Ryberg right, right, will be like, no, can't bring Gimme. He's a nightmare. <laughs> I'll be like, why is his name Tickle? But yeah. I'm like, I don't know. He's just, he's, he had a rough childhood. He's always um, talking for spoilers, that man. <laughs> yeah. He keeps talking about some third book. I haven't heard mm -hmm. of it. Um, well, does, these, does the book tie into the story of the Division 2? Yes. And it will tie in more importantly as time goes on. Definitely worth picking up, Rick. Like I said, the first one's wonderful. I've started the second one. It's absolutely wonderful from the start. Really, 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 really good. I know. I, I, this is going to sound like I want when you finish, I want you to tell me what you think, man, because I, I hope you enjoy it. And yeah, there's stuff that, closer to the end that I'm really excited for people to encounter and react to. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, maybe, I'm sure it, I'm sure it's absolutely wonderful. And when and chat, all you have to do actually is type online division compromise reviews and they're all glorious like they're they're all almost max stars they're but, all great yeah, ratings I mean, I... and yes you know and not and and sometimes i might come across seeming chat believe it or not i might be a little bit biased right because i love the division right but sometimes you'll read these reviews outside of our fandom and our you know our own little universe that we have going on here and these are people that aren't quite into the division as much as we are, and they find it wonderful as well. So it, it says a lot, you know. And um, I'm sure I'll get bad reviews soon because that is part of the life. Uh, but I already got one that kind of hurt my feelings a little bit. Really? <laughs> That's part of the life, too. Oh, well, who um, cares about that but, person? They're not important. Yeah, fuck <laughs> them, right? Uh, I don't know about a choose your... No, that would be cool. Don't get me wrong. Choose your own adventure book would be cool. But what I would also like to do, it doesn't have to be me. I think someone should do a rogue book. Oh, yeah, that would be good. The story of an agent who goes rogue, told from their point of view and what they experience. That's great. Um, That's the fourth book right there. <laughs> yeah i mean yeah go tell people that that's what you want do, do a, tr do a trilogy there books. we've had the, yeah. we've had a trilogy of good ones and a trilogy of bad ones that'd be great yeah i mean a well like genuinely like how cool would it be to have um maybe even not the same point of view character for each one but you could do like a book from a rogue's point of view a book from black tusk's point of view and a book from an outcast point of view something along those lines 
And like, I think that could be really cool too. Yeah, that'd be those really would really cool. expand what we see of the with the world. Yeah, that'd be one. That'd be wonderful. And obviously, then this would start setting you up for retirement when the ten book contract. Then this would be great. Yeah, at that point, I would just be the poet laureate of the division universe, yeah. and I'll be done. It'd be great. <laughs> First wave rogue would be cool. I think so as well, actually. Like I said, right, that, that first uh, that first first wave story is 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 loved to a lot of people, and I think them stories could be great being told. Well, yeah, like I said, uh, it does sh- the yeah overlapping them would be cool. Anyways, before I'm getting distracted, uh, the first wave connects to this story. I hope you guys find it interesting. How it does, I hope you'll read and find out. And um, thank you. That's the end of that's the end of my stay. Thank you so much for having me, DJ Tiggle. This was awesome. You are Thank very you guys welcome. Are always great. Anytime, sir. You know you're welcome. Any anytime. Thank you so much for doing it again. I really appreciate it. This was awesome, and um, thank you again to everyone. And we will get those copies signed and shipped out, and um, DJ here will give them away. Yeah, we'll do that chat. So stay tuned for that. This is going to go up onto YouTube as well, guys. So please do when it goes up later today. Share it around, tweet it, whatever you can, social media. Uh, people who don't always tune into Twitch sometimes tune into YouTube and vice versa. Let's get as much help for this book for Thomas as we possibly can. Share it around the Division community and everyone's cool like that. So we'll get that done as much as we can. Yeah, um, you'd be startled how often people are just like, even Division fans are like, I didn't know there was a book series. <laughs> yeah, um, exactly, so yeah. the more you guys tell people who you know like these games... Yeah, we get it a lot. So people, I, like people in chat, will say like this book. I have it out like at least once or twice a week. Going, look, there's a book. Like you know, and people talk about things, and it's like it's it's surprising that still even like a year later, it's not that well. There is still new agents. <laughs> I don't know. You know. I'm doing everything I can, man. I'm doing. Huh. It's hard to get the word out. It's hard. So it is, the, uh, right. We try. We that try. Word of mouth. But um, what did you miss? A free and, Lando uh, giveaway. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much mate i really appreciate it like i said that invite for playing with us is always open of course and uh it's and, been, it's been uh, an absolute i won't pleasure. do it unless i have to <laughs> but um yeah you guys have a lovely evening and uh y'all be good or you know at least be good at being bad yes Peace. well they will do thanks mate he's wonderful in chat he's absolutely wonderful please 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 do check out his book uh, do check him out on uh, on Twitter. There is the link to Amazon. Let me grab his uh, his Twitter again for you, and I'll put it all in the chat. And he's super active on uh, on Twitter as well. I'm sure if you ask questions, he's he's super nice. He will respond. My live streaming channel is back open, guys. If you're going to come and play, hop in, please. Um, what's his only fans? Uh, let me switch back to the other page. There was loads went on. I'm going to need help in catching up and where we went on to. Uh, Q, thank you so much for the huge donation uh, for getting the book sorted chat. So the compromise book, I'm going to speak to Thomas. He's going to sign a bunch of copies. He'll get them shipped over. Uh, they shipped really fast last time as well. But in fact, I'll speak to him. I might just DM him now. If I can get him the money straight away, we might get them here before Christmas. Uh which would be really, really cool. Um, and yeah, let's uh, let's do that and get it sorted out. Did you enjoy it, chat? Was it good? 